Okay, before I get into my five favorite breakfast foods, there's something you need to know. Our ancient ancestors didn't crawl out of our caves asking what's for breakfast. They didn't find break fast until lunch or even dinner time. But today, most of us are eating constantly for almost 16 hours a day. That produces a real overload on our mitochondria, number one, those energy-producing organelles in most of our cells. And if you think about it, it produces an incredible overload on the working of the wall of your gut. Digestion and absorbing food is hard work, and it's damaging to the wall of your gut. And your gut needs, just like you do, some downtime to repair itself. And if you're constantly eating, you're constantly exposing the wall of your gut to work. So quite frankly, the more downtime, rest and relaxation time we can give the wall of our gut, the better. And that's one of the reasons why time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting is such an effective treatment for so many diseases. In fact, a paper published just last week compared intermittent fasting with metformin, the most widely used drug to treat type 2 diabetes, and intermittent fasting blew away metformin as a way of reducing insulin resistance, as a way of getting rid of type 2 diabetes, just two days a week of limiting calories, the so-called 5-2 diet, was vastly superior in humans to metformin for reducing type 2 diabetes. Great news. Now, as most of you know, I typically limit my eating window to a two-hour window during dinner time from the months of January through June. But I do break this on some weekends and enjoy breakfast in the afternoon. And when I do, I make sure I'm eating what is actually healthy for me. So let's go through some of my favorites. First of all, plain goat or sheep yogurt or plain coconut yogurt is really right up there. Couple things you can do. Most people do not like the tanginess of these yogurts. But now, thanks to allulose, which is a true sugar, which is actually a prebiotic, which no calories, will work great as a sweetener for these yogurts. The other thing about goat and sheep yogurt, and also coconut yogurt, is they're loaded with medium-chain triglycerides, which will promote ketosis, which is what you're looking for. Sadly, cow milk yogurt is the wrong casein A1, and really cow's milk does not have a lot of medium-chain triglycerides. Number two, have an avocado with olive oil and or MCT oil. Scoop it out, mash it up, add some MCT oil, olive oil, and salt and pepper, and you're ready to go. I order sliced avocado all the time when I'm over in Europe, and it's readily available, and people don't even blink. It's often on many breakfast menus uh, over in France and in Italy. That's how to have an avocado for breakfast, not avocado toast. If you really want to make it even more fun, cut the avocado in half, take out the pit, put two pasture-raised or omega-3 egg yolks in the pit, throw it in the broiler with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and eat it with a spoon. It's absolutely delicious. Number three, have a handful of walnuts or macadamia nuts or hazelnuts or pistachios. Work by my friend, Dr. Walter Longo, who's head of longevity at USC. In humans, have shown eating a nut bar for breakfast does not break your fast, does not knock you out of ketosis. So you can have your breakfast and still act like you're fasting. And this is actually really great news for those of us who do want to continue our period of ketosis before we break it. Finally, 
Eggs are perfectly fine as a breakfast food as long as you remember to pay the money for the pasture-raised or the omega-3 raised eggs. In general, chickens are fed flax seeds uh, and or algae to make omega-3 eggs. Pastured chicken, by law, have to go out and peck for a living. You can even one-up that and get lectin-free pastured chicken eggs from Farmer Dan at lectinlightchicken.com. And I have no relationship with them, except I'm a huge promoter of what Farmer Dan's doing, and he now has lectin-free eggs for sale. Regardless of how good eggs can be for you, if they're the right eggs, a word of warning. If you have an autoimmune disease and or leaky gut. So many of my patients with autoimmune diseases and or leaky gut are sensitive to the proteins in egg whites and the proteins in egg yolks, regardless of the source of the egg. So be careful and, and listen to your body. And when in doubt, there's no human need for eggs. And again, if you've got an autoimmune disease, you probably don't want to make even the healthy eggs a big part of your diet. Number five, it's fascinating when you look at healthy cultures around the world that many of these cultures have a fermented food as part of their breakfast. Kefirs are everywhere in the Far East. Kimchi is everywhere. Now, people say, well, should you have sweet or savory for breakfast? My answer is neither. You should always think of sour for breakfast. Traditional Korean breakfast is heavy on kimchi. Well, in Japan, they start their day with pickled radishes or natto, which is fermented soybeans. These are great sources of postbiotics. We used to think that these were sources of probiotics, friendly bacteria, but we now realize that most of these foods don't have any living bacteria, but it's the dead bacteria and the products of fermentation, which are now called postbiotics, that actually make the difference. So sour foods, fermented foods are one of the best ways to start your break fast. That's a great breakfast. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. Let me tell you the right way to eat breakfast. Breakfast should be a way of delivering healthy fats into you and healthy greens into you. Now everybody says, but Dr. Gundry, I'm not gonna eat a salad for breakfast. So that's why I developed my green egg sausage muffin recipe.